Thanks for checking out this movie review video. Um, yes, I am going to at some point do another film analysis uh, video, but uh, I really need to dig in and have the time for that. Um, when I'm doing just the movie reviews, it's more of like I want to be able to do something else while I'm watching a movie a little bit sometimes, or I just want to be able to relax and not have to sit down and like write things up. But I do take a few little notes on my phone. Um, one of the big differences between the review and the analysis for me is going to be the newer films. I'm going to do, just do as review because I feel like I don't want to put spoilers out there. So anyone that says movie review will have no spoilers. Anyone that says movie analysis is going to obviously have spoilers because it's going to be a very in-depth look at the film. So with that said... Here I go with a review of Blue My Mind, and this one is available currently when this video goes up on Shudder, the Shudder streaming service for horror. Uh, if you're not familiar with that and you like horror, you should definitely sign up. Just so you know, the pricing is going to go up on May 8th. I don't know what the pricing increase is going to be, but if you're in before May 8th, it seems like you can stay at the old rate which the old rate right now is $5 a month if you're doing monthly. If you pay for a full year, it's $4 a month. So definitely worth it. If you watch one movie a month, it's 100% worth it. And there's a lot of great stuff. So I love Shudder. That's why a lot of the stuff I'm pulling for like analysis and, and reviews is from Shudder. So anyway, so blew my mind. This film is a 2017 release. So pretty new, not even, I mean, potentially two years, maybe not even two years old. And it's from Switzerland. I think I can say this is the first Swiss film I've ever seen. Um, I've seen movies from all over the place, but this may be my first Swiss film. I think it is. Uh, so needless to say, there are subtitles. It's not a language that's hyper fast. So if you're a slower reader like myself, it doesn't go by like super, super quick like some, uh, some do. Like French films for me, uh, French language goes faster than a lot of other ones. But like Swiss apparently and like um, Swedish and Japanese when they're subtitled are slower. So it's better for someone like me who isn't a super fast reader. So just know that going into it if you haven't seen it. Um, so this film uh, it reminds me of uh, a bunch of films. Uh, it's kind of from a subgenre of like a coming of age horror film. And it reminds me of a bunch of other ones that I've seen. And when I kind of like you know, typed into my phone notes what films those were, I was looking and I'm like, these are all from different countries. So it kind of seems like each of these countries has their own coming-of-age horror film that I've seen, which is interesting. So I'm, I'll go over these. Oh, uh, well, there's one, there's one overlap. Um, a lot of these are more recent-ish, though. So it reminds me of Raw, uh, the movie Raw. That's from um, France. It reminds me of the movie Ginger Snaps which is from Canada, uh, the movie Teeth, which is from the United States, uh, the movie Somewhat, the movie Let the Right One, One In from Sweden, which is actually, um, it's close, but it's different age ranges, because uh, Blew My Mind is, is like teen, and it's like high school coming of age, whereas Let the Right One In is, is much younger, it's kind of like l late, um, I was going to say late elementary school, no, I think more like middle school. So, uh, yeah, so it's a little bit different. Then also Carrie, which is from the United States, you know, a Stephen King film. Uh, and then to, also to a degree, the movie The Lure that's from Poland. Although that movie is kind of like, kind of crazy. Uh, I can say that I can recommend all of those, honestly. This is a cool subgenre. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, the whole coming-of-age horror subgenre is basically young people struggling with... Um, becoming themselves, you know, struggling with changes. A lot of the times it's very much tied into their bodies and the changes that young people go through as they grow up. A lot of times it's tied into social issues, trying to feel accepted, wanting to feel a part of a group, but at the same time, in order to make that happen, feeling like you're compromising yourself and just an issue of like, as you change, as you start to formulate who you're going to be as an older person, feeling like you don't know yourself anymore, like feeling like you're not even human. And a lot of the times with the subgenre, that ends up turning into a creature of, of you know, to varying degrees. Uh, because that whole thing, like you don't necessarily feel human. I mean, think back to when you were young. Or if you're watching this and you, and you are young, think about the, the struggles you have 
and how you feel, you know, not, not like right in your skin sometimes. I mean, that, that's definitely a thing. So it's one of those types of films. And for that reason, since I've seen a bunch a lot like it, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't tread new territory for me. It feels kind of formulaic when it comes to those other films. Not saying that it like, you know, was, is a knockoff or took from it because I don't, I'm not so sure that it did, especially because it's from another country. So like this is from Switzerland and all the other ones I mentioned are pr pretty much from other countries except for Carrie and Teeth. So, um, so yeah, it's Switzerland's own thing. They may not have any other films like this. This may be the one, so I don't know. Um, so this is, you know, the main character who did an amazing job. What was her name? Her name was, uh, Luna Wedler. I need to throw her name out there. Luna Wedler. She did an outstanding job with her acting in this very, very demanding role. Very demanding role. All the acting in general was really good. And there's a lot of younger people in this, like... I mean, they looked like teenagers. They may not have all been teenagers. They may have been like 20-somethings who looked like they could be teenagers. But nonetheless, younger people. And they did an outstanding job. There were some grown-ups, but not a whole lot. They did a good job, too. But I just needed to call out Luna Wedler because she was the main character in this. She has a lot of screen time, and she's a very demanding role. And she really tackled it extremely well. Uh, the other thing is I feel like I should do a shout out to the director, which, sorry, I'm looking this up. This one I'm looking down. Um, Lisa Brulman. She did a very good job with the directing. It looks really good. Direction's great. Cinematography's great. It sounds great. Good script. Uh, the only thing for me is that it just doesn't seem new to me. There isn't a whole lot of new to it. The other thing is that I knew where that I could tell where this was going within the first, like, 15 minutes of the film, I was like, I know what's going to happen at the end, which is, like, a twist ending, but I felt like it was less subtle than it should have been, so, but I'm not going to talk more about that, just because if you haven't seen this film, I would encourage you to just check it out, because it is good, it looks really good, it's very well written, it's just, for me, it's nothing, like, super new, and for some people, like, that's fine, you know, you don't need something to be super new all the time, I like that personally, but I'm also not going to knock a movie completely just for, for not bringing anything super new to the table. And the thing is, this film does bring some new stuff because situations are a little bit different. How they pull things off, practical effects, you know, all that type of stuff. It's kind of different. So, you know, it's its own version of this subgenre. And that's fine. It's good. Like I said, it's, it's pretty well done. Um, so once again, you know, it's just kind of about... I'm trying to understand yourself, the changes you go through, all that type of stuff. I was pretty surprised watching this that it was a woman who, at least she partially wrote it. Lisa Brulman, she was one credit on writing it. The other person is a man, Dominic Lock Locker, Locker, L-O-C-H-E-R. Uh, I was kind of surprised because it was very sexualized. Like, all the characters who were young, were very, very sexualized. The guys even to a, gr a degree. And, um, you know, that just kind of surprised me because usually that's more of a male thing in film, especially horror films. But, you know, anyone can really end up doing that. And uh, I, it made sense because it's about youth today. You know, there there's a lot of pressure to be sexualized. There is, you know, it's a societal thing. It's a societal thing. So it made sense. Um this is kind of like a very slow burn. It doesn't develop super fast, but that's not a problem with it. I actually think it's a strength because it kind of builds things slowly. There are a few moments in there where it feels like it, the pacing is a little bit off and it's taking a little bit too much time to get to the next point. And maybe they've kind of iterated uh, certain points a little too much, but it's not that bad with those things. And then it's very, very minuscule, minuscule overall. I like it. I think it's well done. Pacing is, for the most part, pretty good. And, uh, yeah, it's a slow burn, and I think it works. Um, it really plays at also another theme of the whole duality of loose versus prude. You know, if someone's engaging in sexual activity or they're totally abstaining from it or anywhere in between, basically there is no in between. At least if you're female, it's that whole big issue of if you're a woman and you're, or I'm sorry, if you're a girl, not yet a woman, and you're trying to participate in any sort of sexual activity or you're showing any sexuality, 
uh, you are automatically on the loose end of the spectrum. You just get pushed right over there. But if you, you don't really have interest, then you're pushed over to the other side where it's like, you're a total prude. You're, you know, so uptight and stuck up and you think you're better than everyone. And you're, you know, so it's this, it plays very well on that whole issue of the struggle of, I would like to be here, but I would also like to be here. So how about if I go here, but then I just get pushed over here. So it, you know, and, and I think that's an important theme. Um, yeah. So that's actually kind of it. The last thing I had written on there was that I saw it coming. I saw the ending coming. So that kind of like was a downer because when I first, when things were first telegraphed to me early on in the film, I was like, I'm pretty sure I know exactly how this is going to end, but I hope I'm wrong. I always hope I'm wrong with that stuff because it's, it's fun to be surprised. It's awesome to get twists, which, you know, it's not a hundred percent predictable. So there were some like mini twists in there. So, you know, but it looks good. Um, well written, well directed. I recommend it. it. It's a it's a fun flick. I think out of five stars, uh, with half stars counting, I would give it. Mm, I give it a three and a half. I think I'd give it a three and a half. It is solid. It is good. Um, it definitely seems realistic too. Well, I mean, it's horror, so it's not a hundred percent realistic. But it feels realistic for the environment it created, for the world it created. So that's not easy to do, in my opinion. So good stuff. Anyway, people check that out. That's obviously a recommendation for me. Blew my mind, like I said, currently on Shutter. I'm not sure if there's any other way to get it. I think that may be the first streaming release for it in the United States. Uh, maybe even the first release in general. Actually, no, because on, on through Netflix DVD, I would be able to get it. I had looked at that, and I was like, oh, I would be able to get it through Netflix DVD, so strike that. But anyway, check out Blew My Mind. Also, just check out anything on Shudder. It's awesome. And like I said, if you are gonna, if you are thinking about signing up now, is the time. May 8th is the deadline for the pricing to go up. Or if you don't really care that much and you feel like you need a little more time, that's fine. Do what you want. Anyway, thank you very much for checking out this review. Put some comments down here. Are there any movies you want to see me review? Any movies you want to see me do more in-depth analysis on that will include spoilers? It's up to you. And then please hit that subscribe. It takes you literally a second. Painless. It's so painless for you. But it can help me out a lot in the long run, and I would appreciate that. Also hit the notification bell so you know when I am putting out new videos. Is this actually where the notification bell is and the subscribe? Is it up in this corner? I may just be pointing there every time and it's not there. I'll never know. Well, you can tell me down in the comments. Anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.